you cannot just look at them as a caloric source because that is not what they are. They fundamentally change your body. And insulin especially is problematic because it will forces energy into cells. It stops energy from coming out of cells. It blocks proteolysis. It blocks lipolysis. And so without lipolysis, you cannot break down your fat stores to make energy, to go through gluconeogenesis and make blood sugar and glycogen and to make ketones to run your body and your brain. So you shut down that whole process, but it also does something more insidious, which it blocks a hormone called leptin, which is secreted from your fat stores and uh, tells your brain how much energy you have. And it's like a running gas gauge on how much energy uh, your body has. And so your brain looks at that and goes, oh, we got plenty of energy. We don't need to eat. Or it gets blocked by insulin and fructose, by the way. And now your brain can't see its leptin. It thinks you're starving to death. And now your blood sugar is dropping because your insulin's up, which forces your blood sugar to go down. And your brain sends out a panic signal that says, if you don't eat now, you will die. And so this is why multiple times a day, people think that they're dying and they need to eat constant amounts of food. And so this is a, just a depiction of that leptin uh, insulin cycle and it gets disrupted by carbohydrates. So when you eat carbohydrates, your blood sugar necessarily goes up. Well, this is not a good thing. People think it's, oh, I'm getting more energy. That, that helps me. No, it doesn't actually. High blood sugar is actually damaging to your body. This is, this is because glucose molecules can physically fuse to other molecules and damage them, make them act abnormally, pathologically, or just not at all. It's called glycation. Um, fructose is actually worse than this. It does, it does more of this in your body. Um, so in a defensive mechanism, your insulin goes up, right? Because it, it, this is high blood sugar, chronic high blood sugar is actually what kills diabetics is what breaks them down. This is again, that toxicity model in, you know, in, in full view where you're eating something and this is damaging your body. Okay. And we've had, I think over a hundred years of scientific literature showing that a ketogenic diet is very efficacious for treating diabetics. So Otto Warburg described uh, in, in the 1930s and 40s, and he actually won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his work in cancer biology, that cancer cells feed on glucose. In fact, they get about, they need about 400 times the amount of glucose that normal cells do. And this is because their mitochondria are damaged. Otto Warburg showed that if you have healthy mitochondria, you cannot get cancer. All right. And this is something that's been uh, reiterated and actually proven true by the work of, of such people as uh, Professor Thomas Seafried of Boston College, who I've had on my podcast. So this is hard biochemistry. If your mitochondria work properly, they stay in oxidative phosphorylate, phosphorylation, okay? And that uses oxygen to make an abundant amount of ATP. When your mitochondria get damaged, they stop being able to do that and they go into a fermentative process. And so it actually takes a lot more glucose to make ATP because you're, you're getting, you know, 36 ATP, uh, from aerobic, uh, oxidative phosphorylation, but you're only getting two, uh, when, when you're doing anaerobically. Doctors to trust.com the world's number one site for short annotated nutrition videos.